I'm coming to the close of the theme I've been following on the providence of God, which has been uh, part of a overarching theme on the kingship and exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ following his resurrection and being given all authority in heaven and earth by the Father to rule as a man over all of creation. And I'm going to complete the, uh, uh, this theme with a couple of hymns on creation. Uh, in the Bible, creation is something that God points to as one of the greatest marks and signs and evidences of his providence. And uh, I think, in my view, something that we often neglect in our worship and praise is God's handiwork in creation. And the Bible's view is not just that God has created all things and, uh, as it were, put them in motion and uh, they follow sort of natural laws that uh, make them work and function, but that God is actively involved and engaged in everything that is happening in creation. As Calvin says, God's hands are as involved as creation as his eyes. He's not, uh, as it were, uh, standing back observing what creation does as it follows nat what we call natural laws. He's actively involved in these things happening. So, for instance, the motion of the planets um, uh, in our own solar system uh, may, as we see it, follow certain natural laws, but it is God himself actively by his power sustaining them uh, in their uh, in their orbits around the sun, sustaining the sun, causing uh, rays of light to reach the earth, causing growth and all the cycles of nature. These are all God's activity and his providential action. Uh, so, uh, for instance, the tides going in and out are not simply a response to laws of gravity and the interaction of the moon and the earth. God makes the tide come in. God makes the tides go. He makes each wave break on the shore. And so, as uh, uh, the psalm says, he makes grass to grow. He makes the sun rise. He causes the rain to fall. And uh, when, we're, uh, when we have a really good grasp of what the Bible says about this, it's intended for us to look out on creation and observe it. Um, not as something that we just uh, see these laws active in, because natural laws, and this is really important, laws never make anything work. They're only things we observe and how things work. It is God who makes them work. And so as we look out in creation, we're intended to see the activity of God in everything that we see around us as we look at our amazing bodies. We're intended to see God at work actively in all of their functions and uh, the amazing things that they can do. And uh, what I find interesting is uh, when uh, I look at even some of the great hymn books that I've been able to draw hymns from for this project, uh, in the section on creation, it's a very, very small section. And I think this seems to go hand in hand with us having much less of a uh, emphasis and um, revelation of God's providence and creation than the Jewish church had in the Old Testament. And so that's what this hymn is about. It's about God's creation, and then it moves on to praising him and worshiping him for his activity in his creation. Uh, it was written by my uncle Robert Grant in the 19th century, but it has a really interesting history for me. Uh, the uh, hymn he wrote is based on an original hymn by my uncle William Ketha, who uh, wrote in the 16th century. He's thought to have been a Scotsman who fled as a refugee to Geneva at the time when John Calvin was leading the Reformation. He was involved in the translation uh, of the uh, Greek Bible into uh, um, English, the great Geneva Bible that 
really was the foundation for the King James Bible. And he also wrote a number of psalms at the time when John Calvin was revolutionising worship by the singing of psalms in vernacular languages. Uh, perhaps the psalm that we uh, are most familiar with that William Kether wrote was the old hundredth, all people that on earth do dwell. Uh, but uh, this hymn, O Worship the King All Glorious Above, is based on a hymn that he had written. O worship the King all glorious above, O gratefully sing His power and His love, Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, Pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of His might and sing of His grace, Whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, His chariots of wrath, the deep thunderclouds fall, And dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wonders untold, Almighty your power has created of old, Established it fast by a changeless decree, and round it has cast like a garment the sea. Your generous care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light, it streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew. And the rain. Weak children of dust and feeble as frail, in you do we trust, nor find you to fail. Your mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. O measureless might, inexpressible. Angels delight to praise you above Your humbler creation in our feeble ways With true adoration shall sing to your praise Your humbler creation in our feeble ways With true adoration shall sing 